building a team. If you have any questions for the presentation, number one and number two, uh, very welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Zhong Huan, and I'm working for the Ministry of Public Health of Thailand in the unit called Health Intervention and Technology Assessment Program. Uh, this study is um, part of my um, thesis. Um, I study the um, so social and economic factors that um, influence the development of childhood obesity um, in Thailand, and I focus the area of study in Bangkok metropolitan, and I explain why. Um, so we can skip the first part, which is, I think everyone knows like what obesity is, and this is the um, standard cut point for obesity in children. So we use the, um, the so standard deviation of uh, between one and two. So these are the group of uh, children that I included in my study. Um, why obesity? The, actually in Thailand, if you, maybe you don't see a lot of, you know, like big people, but for us, we know that for Asian people, you cannot be that, you know, big in the picture of Western people. To, to be like considered obese because you can develop um, diabetes and other diseases very easily. So um, um, also in Thailand we found a lot of, of obesity in increasing, especially in children age between zero and six years old, and it increased like up to forty percent from uh, two thousand and four to two thousand and nine, and. The reason I focus on children is that childhood obesity also um, it affects a lot when the children grow up, and it is um, if you if the kids are obese or overweight when they were young, it is likely that they will continue the the health condition when they grow up. And prevention for the children is actually proved to be the best and most um, effective intervention to prevent child um, obesity in the future. And my study focused on um, preschoolers. And why urban area? Uh, so I reviewed um, the data and I found that uh, one of the significant factors that are contributing to childhood uh, obesity development is also the condition of uh, living in the metropolitan area. And actually there are a lot of um, relevant de determinants that um, influence the development of obesity. But I only focus on the behavioral mediator of family and the children's behavior because the first three factors like this group uh, tend to be too difficult to change. But I want to send a message to health promoter like what are the elements that they can take out from the study and create a message to the people to make them change the behavior to make it um, to solve the problem. So the contribution of this study, first, um, you can see that lots of the data that I presented in the table, most of them are, are from epidemiological study, so which is a public health study, so you study big group of population and you can identify like factors, or maybe TV watching, or sedentary behavior, or eating big portion, but those information for me don't tell anything. Like if I am a health promoter and if I want to change, I want to understand why a big portion 
why they don't eat vegetable in order to create health promoting message. So I that's why I proposed a qualitative study to understand um, what people think and what we can do in order to change those kind of thinking or value that they have. And in Thailand, most of the study is also um, fill in that category, so most of them are quantitative study. So that's why I hope that my study can fill in the gap of the knowledge um, in, in Thailand. So the, this is the objective of my study is to focus on the um, understanding of mechanism of in influential factors to childhood obesity and to incorporate multiple perspectives. Um, one thing that my study pro um, offer is the view from the children themselves. Um, maybe you can, you might question like if they are preschooler, how can they answer the question? How can they reflect what they feel about food? But it actually, you, it is possible that you can ask them to reflect on how they feel about food, about snack, why they like this thing, why they don't like this thing, something like that. So, in terms of methodology, I, should, I use the participant observation and interview methods. And I selected three kindergartens um, to represent like different socioeconomic status of the family of the children as well. So the first uh, kindergarten is a state kindergarten, so it's free of charge. Basically, the people who are in the, the lower level of socioeconomic status, they send their children to that kindergarten. And the second one is a private kindergarten with um, about 1,500 baht um, fee per month. So this is kind of um, at the, a little bit upper level compared to the first one. And the third one is the very luxurious <laughs> kindergarten. So this actually, the, the fee per month is equal to the teacher salary. So the parents must be really, really rich in order to send their kids to the, the third private kindergarten. So these are the picture, the sample of the um, uh, cafeteria. And you can see some of the, the food and the uniform that show some differences. Mm -hmm. So let's go for the fighting. Um, I'm so happy that you are all already have lunch because uh, the slides may contain food pictures <laughs> and you might feel a bit hungry later. Uh, these are the com comparison of the school food. Actually, I found that although these kindergartens offer different uh, socioeconomic status of people who send their kids to, but actually the main food that they provided, although the menu are different, but the energy that the children have are not that much different, although they have sushi for the, the, the luxury one. But the total uh, energy and nutrition that children have not, is not that different, but also this lunch is only 40% of the Daily, um, daily amount of calorie that the children should have. And this is really small part, actually, of the children's life. And I found that in our kindergartens in Thailand, teachers tend to put only small amount of food first because they want to teach the value of food because in Thailand, you should uh, finish everything on the plate. Otherwise, it's not so respectful for the farmer. We, and they also need to pray first, so we value a lot food. So you don't see much of the leftover. Everyone has to finish everything. Mm -hmm. But when they are at home, that's the problem. And you can see these are the big. Um, these all they eat the big amounts. So it's amount that we eat, but the children actually like have all of that because the parents they feel that when the kids go to school to so kindergarten, they may not be able to eat vegetable. So I don't eat from home a lot, so they don't feel hungry when they're at the kindergarten. So this is actually the big part, like for uh, breakfast and dinner. And for meal drinking, actually the free kindergartens, they don't um, show big differences. Even for the, the like poorest group of people, they want to buy like the best milk for their children out of pocket, even though we have um, free school milk. Mm -hmm. But everyone go for like this thing because of the, the value of the milk that the government promoted. So everyone thought that, okay, if you go for best milk with A plus, high Q, whatever, DHA, that would make their children like smarter, why not? So even though the, everyone tried to purchase all this kind of thing for their children, and this is not different, I would, 
I would say, like for the luxurious kindergarten or the like a very low socioeconomic. And for snack, the that one actually the are the snack that the kindergarten provide according to the guidelines for the Ministry of Health. But again, when they go home, they could reach for like more variety thing back home. And also in, in some kindergarten where they have a snack stall, the parents uh, will give them money to buy more and on the way to home. So like my finding were like, um, it's a qualitative and I followed them for a year. So I tried to figure out how I can um, analyze them and put them into a more like concrete form. So I employ this, um, it's called the ecological system theory. They use a lot in identifying the factors that are related to the childhood, um, child development. So this one I apply for child, childhood obesity development. The child is in the middle and then the, like the next layer is the like factors from a bigger environment. And these are actually my findings that I can list all the factors from observing the three kindergartens and follow the kids' families, like uh, 16 families for one year. <clears throat> in macro system factors, I found yeah, a lot of um, government policy that drive the, the way the children eat in school and at home, and also industry-driven dri factors. But the thing that I want to focus is the uh, social values that I found from, from Thai people. And this I would uh, propose, I already proposed to the Thai Health Promotion Foundation for further study that if they can create a message that can actually capture those values, it would be able to change. I can give example of, um, I can skip this. Um, okay, move on to this one. Um, so in order to understand that, I would like to um, Question: The first one, like how do caregivers and other actors and structure influence um, preschoolers' food choice and consumption pattern? So I found that actors that and structure. The first one is that mother is the main caregivers and grandparents and also other family members. And I found kindergarten teachers also like implement food consumption related policy at kindergarten. So these are structures that the children was put into the middle and. They were made to follow this, mm -hmm. and how the value from the like on the top of that table transmitted to children is that you can see from the like the top value created by industry, government, and other agency, and put through the parents and teachers and the, to the children. This is the like the example of the interview. This mother, she went to the course of the hospital and she learned like, okay, the sun, fish is really good for her son. So she, every morning I saw like a big box of salmon fish and rice, like food box, and the boy eats it every day. And hoping that he will like get smart and, and he get addicted to that portion. So after that on, he like keep eating like that big amount. So this is also the, how the value and knowledge that um, pediatrician gave to her and she um, internalized with her own value and make it into practices. Also, this is to illustrate just how um, um, industry captured the value of, um, for example, eating meals like or milk makes children tall and smart and also its parents' roles. This is how the indust in industry can turn that value into a message and make parents actually buy that product. So I think this is interesting how like uh, the, the industry can do it and why not the health promotion sector can, can do the same thing. So my time is up. So I give you the conclusion now. Um, there are only like um, six points. I found that lifestyle of employed parents and in the obesogenic environment of um, Bangkok really contribute to adults' decision concerning children's food. And also, I found like in, in Bangkok, socioeconomic status is a minor influence, given a cheap price of food in Bangkok as well. And there is more important uh, the value that adults hold, how they react, uh, use the value to react on the practices, and value shaped by um, 
campaign from the government and the private sector, for example, like milk is good for you, make you tall. This is also um, very influential. And also, yeah, I encourage the health promotion practitioner to perform such a study to understand people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Um, can, can I ask one question? When the participants know that you are following them, uh, do they share the habit? Um, actually, no, because they perceive me as a student, so they treat me more like an assistant teacher. So they help them clean the children and shower them, and then when I stay at their house, I am like a babysitter. Sitter. So <laughs> they are really welcoming me to take care of the four years old running around <laughs> every week. So thank you so thank you. much.